What's good, everybody? Welcome to Hype Market. I'm Utel. And I'm Justin. And today we're here to tell you that the old shit is way better than the new shit when it comes to vintage clothing. Way better? Way better. Yes. So Justin, explain us why the old shit is in fact better than the new shit when it comes to vintage clothing. Ah, uh, yes. Old versus <laughs> you have to new. sit back. I've... I have to sit back. Go ahead, man. Now, a lot of it is aesthetic and fit, man. You right. know, it's just like the way things used to be manufactured. Also, the age of things. Age plays a big role into how things fit, how things look aesthetically, how they feel. Also, the storytelling. There's not as much storytelling with new clothing. Of course, when you look into the vast collections of vintage clothing, there are so many different themes, culturally significant moments and everything we loved growing up. You know, it's really just like a blast from the past. I agree. I like the nostalgia factor, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And it's like, a lot of this stuff might have been little when it happened or when it came out. So I love the fact that I can jump into that and, you know what I'm saying, be able to feel a part of that just by rocking some of that vintage clothes, like old tours or old moments in sports history or things like that. So I love the nostalgia factor. Also, it's an act of sustainability, and it is basically like mixing the old and the new is the 2020 uniform. The 2020 you know I mean? uniform, I like that. Yeah, for real, it's like, you walking down the street, yeah. like middle of LA, like what you gonna see? You gonna see a vintage tee, some designer pants, and some J's, or some SB's or something, Air Max, something modern with the foot, something designer on the pant, and then something old on the top. It's interesting that you said sustainability, because a lot of people don't, you know, tend to think about that with, you know, the generation we're in when everything just gets, comes and goes. Well, you know, the root of sustainability is using what already exists instead of producing something new, right? And so when you look at vintage streetwear, like buying a vintage tee instead of a brand new white tee, that is an act of sustainability. So, you know, it's all great. Vintage is a sustainable practice, but really though, the margins that you come up off of with vintage t-shirts is like actually yeah, unreal. Let's, let's talk about it for real. When you get really into sourcing vintage clothing, you end up paying by weight, not per piece, you know what I mean? So when you're digging through these pallets and you find all of these rag houses, they call them, and you find all of these rag houses and you're digging through literally like mountains of clothing, you gotta mask up all the dust, <laughs> all the debris, it gets crazy in there, man. Yeah. So if you find a vintage grail that you know sells for $500, but you're literally paying five cents for it. Because again, you're shopping by weight, not by product, you know what I mean? So what you can really expand upon is the price and profit margin of the, these articles. So basically what you're saying is, People are in the wrong game. People when are in the wrong game, man. Selling, when selling it comes sneakers, to, yeah. selling uh, all these other merchandise. Yeah, for real, because nothing really depreciates in vintage, you know what I mean? Because everything has a finite amount. Right. You know I mean, similar to, to sneakers, for sure. But I think what the biggest difference is, is that the initial price that you pay for some of these things, it might also be from your dad's closet, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like the markup is crazy. Yeah. So um, speaking of how vintage tees and the culture trying to kind of transition to streetwear. You know, a lot of people, I feel like we were introduced to vintage rap tees in 2014, 2015, when a lot of people's favorite rappers, ASAP Rocky, Kanye, Travis, Big Sean, these people were wearing vintage rap tees. And I think for a lot of people, not for the OGs, but for a lot of people, that was kind of their little introduction yeah, into vintage sure. rap tees and even vintage rock tees, and it kind of introduced them to that world. So I'm not completely mad at that. I'm usually yeah. mad about everything. I was gonna right? say, you- I'm usually mad about everything. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the popularization of vintage culture has definitely given a lot of people opportunity to function within the space of fashion. Right. You know, vintage wasn't really considered fashion until very recently, right. in menswear in particular, right? And so, you know, we have these influencers, we have these very dominant figures like kind of contributing to that. And like, yeah, you've definitely seen like areas like Melrose in Los Angeles just kind of completely change over the years where it's like now this whole vintage haven and it's like this whole quest and the hunt, which is very similar to like hunting for SBs before it all got all saturated, right? right? Now the hunt for that Tupac tee, now the hunt for that Jay-Z tour tee is like very, very real. So now that we talked about how the current generation, you know, got hip to vintage tees, see what I did there? Why don't we check out a little hype history to see where it all started? Let's do it, yeah. <laughs> so like I was saying, a couple years ago, 2014, 2015, I saw a lot of my favorite rappers 
wearing these vintage rap t-shirts and I was always, you know, hip to vintage t-shirt, vintage clothing, but those are the people that kind of popularized it for the current generation of streetwear enthusiasts. Yeah, I would definitely agree. You know, it was um, sort of a time and place thing too, you know, and like, especially in Los Angeles where a lot of these guys live and function and shop, there's always been a ton of vintage stores in Los Angeles, right? They were under but the, the new generation was kind of making it a little more hip and a little more fashionable to be in these spaces, you know, with the decor and the retail experience kind of, you know, marketing these vintage tees as grail items, as much of grail items as some of these sneakers. The conditions of shopping in Los Angeles really, really attributed to that too. I have a, a personal question I wanna ask. I might have a personal answer, man. What's going on? <laughs> Can I wear an Iron Maiden t-shirt if I don't know any Iron Maiden albums? Metallica, all of that. Do you see metalheads trying to wear 50 cent shirts? No, I don't see I don't see too many so, metalheads. What I've noticed is that metalheads and punk rockers, they stay in their own they lane. They stay in their lane. They stay in their lane, yo. Man, and it's completely that, man. amen. And that's the thing though, that's the thing. Hip hop is about domination. It's about abrasively pushing your culture. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. And so with that, sometimes dudes think they looking jiggy when really they just looking like posers. You think they looking like posers? I, I mean, was gonna say if that you know, shit goes with and, my fit, I'm rocking that. You know, shit, man. but the Fuck whole thing that. is, is like it's really just more so wanting to educate yourself with the product that you buy, even if it's something that's not a vintage tea. Like you want to know about it. You know what I mean? I respect that. You just don't want to be like aimlessly doing something for the sake of the trend. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people like about vintage clothing is, you know, how affordable it is, how inexpensive it is. You can find it, thrift stores, certain places, online. So yeah, that was like part of the hunt, searching these thrift stores, searching these rag houses for these very unique pieces that were unique to your personality. Right. And how you could kind of be more stylish and fashionable and represent yourself on more of a unique level with literally digging through piles of tees. You know what yeah. I mean? So it was like that quest for the inexpensive drip. You're not worried, you're worried more so about color palettes, aesthetic, and you're not so much worried about like the person knowing how much you paid for your shirt, <laughs> knowing how much you paid for your shoes. You Word. know what I mean? But just before we move on, let's talk about the history within the product, like the journey that the vintage clothing takes. Okay, so it all starts with what the blank t-shirt is, right? So there's a couple of grams, right? right. Um, old school Gildan Hammer tees. Gildan. Uh, Screen Stars are the ones. Screen Star vintage tees, always gonna fit smaller, always going to be the best blend. And so the whole thing with these cottons, man, is just like, it takes years and decades and friction and storage and it being dragged on the ground and all these stains and knickknacks for it to become what it is. Yeah. It's like a dry aging of steak. I mean, if yeah. you wait and you're patient, the result that you're gonna get is gonna be much more aesthetically fulfilling. So that's just me, I'm a t-shirt nerd, man. I love to see how old it is, where it's been stored, what part of the state it came from, what part of the country, what part of the world it came from. All this stuff is just much more interesting to me than just like, oh, we screen printed this blank tee and now we're selling it in a store. Okay, so we just gave you a brief breakdown of how these 80s and 90s pieces became the grails that they are today, as well as went back to 2015 to how some of our favorite artists and rappers repopularized the genre. And with that said, we're gonna tell you guys what to do with some of your favorite vintage items in our next segment, Plus Tax. Let's do it. We're gonna get into the Plus Tax, where we're gonna give you our picks on whether to buy, sell, or hold your vintage collection. Bam Bam Bigelow, WCW Championship Wrestling, The Beast. Look at this guy, look at the head tap. You know That's what I'm saying? Fire. Also, like in terms of screen printing, it's kind of hard to get it like that hard. OG, WCW, World Championship Wrestling. This is definitely a hold to me, man. You know, there are a lot of wrestling t-shirts out there, but for me, if it's a WCW, not a WWF, you should hold. Anything WCW, I gotta agree with bro, you gotta hold that. You gotta yeah, keep I mean, that. This is before wrestling turned into soap opera. Yeah, too. wrestling turned yeah, into like a TV show. And then of course, based on condition, you want them to look worn, you want them to have their own unique flair, their own unique marks, knickknacks and stuff. This is what right. makes the vintage tee, you know, valuable, it's own story. OG Reggae, the Steel Pulse. Now this one's really cool, got this a really good back hit, right? This is fire, yeah, the back is crazy, living legacy. This is a cult following Steel Pulse Reggae, man. This is definitely a hold on to this and, and bust it out for the right occasion. Makes sense. So right here, we have good throwback Jay-Z. And what do you think about this one, bro? You see you got on the back, Nappy Roots. Right, Nappy N -E -R -D, Roots, N-E-R-D, Hoobastank. Stank. And I think that's Cam. Is that Cam in the that's cut, Cam, the cut right and that's there. Dame. That's how you know it with the Empire State in the back. Yeah. This is very New York. This is like, <laughs> this is speaking to me. This is talking to my soul right now. You, know? you had everything all in this one T. I would hold, man. I would hold. 
I know rap teas are very popular in this realm, but I would hold just given the diverse nature of the tea with the, the tour affiliates on the back, I think that, that adds another dimension to it. And you see, that's very like vintage reseller of you because vintage resellers hate to get rid of stuff. They're yeah. low-key all pack rats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, this is a sell because with the current market right now, you can just get so much for rap tees for like that's no true. reason, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's definitely a dope vintage piece, but it's also got enough hype to it where I'm just trying to unload. And get that off. You know what I mean? For sure. I respect it. So keeping it in the rap hip hop world, it's a long tweet. We have a Woo Wear worldwide with the Killer B logo on it. Also, what's also the dumbest part about the old Woo Wear stuff is the tags are always like on point. It's never like a random blank finches tag. It's always like a Wu Tang Clan tag. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's always very. And they were like the first. They were like the first group to really be doing the merch like crazy on that level. For me, just because Woo Wear is definitely like out there, it was like a very very mass produced thing. I'm gonna go ahead and say sell because you're always gonna be able to come up with something as cool or unique as like another Wu piece. Okay, I agree. I agree with my co-host here as far as the reasons to sell. Personally, we agree. look at that. We agree, we agree, yeah, but yeah. I'm still gonna go against you. <laughs> Personally, I'm from Staten Island, the origin of Wu-Tang. So I'm rocking this shit, man. Crazy. A new little flip on vintage culture, the vintage craze today mm. is rebranding vintage tees. Right. Right. Now these things don't necessarily have a lot of resale value or really any at all. It's like a retro. It's more of a retro. Tees. Yeah, it's more of a retro vintage tee. So this is something very interesting that Kith, Ronnie Feed and Co, they're doing really interesting. So they're taking old tea, old sports tees and stuff, mm -hmm. other culturally significant moments, and then having their own Kith hit on the front of it. So they're rebranding and recycling, mm. most importantly, these vintage tees. This is not the six championship bulls, this is five. They hadn't been oh, for 97 yet. Okay, you see okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is that in between. I, I thought this was 98 with all the rings, but it's only five yeah, of them. It's only, yeah, they didn't have the sixth one yet. Five and so champions. for me, this is definitely a hold. Enjoy it, it doesn't really have much resale value, just something to enjoy and yeah, just get a new, a little bit of new school with some old school flair. It's a personal item. Keep that. Another great example. This is way louder, and you can tell that this is more so, like we said, a retro, a rehash yeah, of a sure. vintage tee. This reminds me of just almost also the back like of the graphic tee. Yeah, the back is the back is super on brand. It's fire. All the series and all the games. And this one kind of it kind of goes more into the retro world. The, yeah, the rehash. Sure. I gotta say, similar to the Bulls tee. I would just hold that down, like you said. Not much resale value. Not with much that. resale value, but it's, it's something any, fun to enjoy. But it's something cool to just, you know, rock. Also, it's like you. a new take on the sort of vintage craze. Which yeah. It's important to acknowledge. Right. Okay, so we just wrapped up plus tax. We gave you our selects right there to buy, sell, or hold your vintage tees. Showed you some rap, some rock, some reggae. And we also showed you some newer vintage tees that you can rock while you hold on to your old gems. So to wrap things up, Justin. I got a tough question for you, man. You always got some tough fucking you know, questions, you know, bro. What's shit, up? Bro. Do you think vintage clothing could ever go out of style? Absolutely not. Fashion always cycles and trends and always uses the past as a reference, as a gateway, as a guide to where you're going to the future. That can be actually as a cross discipline. You can look at that with music, with history, with politics, with fashion, you know, with science. You got to look in the past to really understand where you're going. Honestly, bro, I couldn't have said it better myself. Let me know in the comments below if any of you guys could say it better. Do you think vintage clothing could ever go out of style? I'm Utel. And I'm Justin. And that's Hype Market.